in the previous lecture, we learned about energy conservation of mechanical and electromagnetic systems together. And what we found is that when the energies of the two systems are taken together, then the change W mechanical plus W electromagnetic comes out to be integral S dot d s plus or minus sign depends on you know the whatever d s you are taking. Uh, Let us right now put minus sign here over the surface of the volume in which this mechanical and electromagnetic energy is being considered. Question now that we ask is do E m fields carry momentum also and the answer is yes. So, today we are going to learn about it theoretically and I may upload a few experimental papers which I will look for uh, when we I, I upload the lectures. So, recall what we did for the energy conservation there what we had done taken a volume and ask how much energy is being spent in a system that was j dot e d v and then we transform this to get Poynting's theorem. To deal with momentum instead of asking for how much energy is being spent we will see how much momentum is changing for a system of particles given in a volume. So, here is the volume let me make it thicker and there are some charges inside rho r and there is this current j inside and these charges and currents they change their momentum and the change in momentum is going to be equal to the force applied on the charges. So, change in the momentum d by d t of p mechanical on all these charges is going to be equal to the force on these charges and that is going to be integral of rho E plus J cross B integrated over the volume. And this is what we are going to now work with. So, we are looking for change in the mechanical momentum with time and this is equal to integral over this volume of rho E plus J cross B d V. Let me remind you that here is this volume inside which there are these charges and there are these currents J R. Now, like we did for the energy theorem, the pointing theorem, we are going to transform things using equations for rho and j. So, what we have is divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon 0. Keep in mind that we want to write everything in terms of the fields. So, we are going to substitute for rho r as epsilon 0 divergence of E that is for Maxwell's equations. And the other equation we are going to use is for j. So, recall that we have curl of B equals mu 0 j plus mu 0 epsilon 0 d e d t. And therefore, j is 1 over mu 0 curl of B minus epsilon 0 d e d t. We will substitute this in the equation above. So, let us go to the next slide and write d by d t of p mechanical which is equal to integration of rho e plus j cross b d v 
is going to be equal to integral epsilon 0 del dot e e d v plus 1 over mu 0 integral curl of b cross with b again d v minus epsilon 0 integral d e d t cross with b d v. This is the expression that we want to work with. Now, let us identify a few terms right away. You recall that when we were considering the force on a volume containing charges and currents, the force was expressed as a surface integral of Maxwell's stress tensor. And for electrostatic field, the Maxwell stress tensor was given by del dot E e epsilon 0 and this came out to be equal to summation beta it is alpha th component came out to be summation beta d by d x alpha e alpha uh, this is alpha th component. So, this should be beta beta minus 1 half e square delta alpha beta. So, I have this term already. So, I am not going to disturb that term in the equation. Similarly, you recall that for magnetic field, I had curl of B cross with the alpha th component divided by mu 0 as also equal to or there should be an epsilon 0 here. 1 over mu 0 summation beta d by d x beta b alpha b beta minus 1 half b square delta alpha beta. So, that term also is here I am not going to disturb that. So, the only term I am now going to play around with is this term d e d beta term. So, these two terms I am not touching. So, let us work on this. So, I am now going to work on the term d e d t cross b integrated over the volume and there is an epsilon 0, which I can write as epsilon 0. Since, as being integrated over the volume, I can take d by d t out, write e cross b over the volume minus epsilon 0 integral E cross d b d t over the volume. Again, I use the Maxwell's equations and substitute for d b d t. So, this can then be written as equal to epsilon 0 d by d t of E cross b plus epsilon 0 integral e cross curl of e. So, we have gotten a handle on this term also. So, let us collect all these terms together and write on the next slide that d by d t of p mechanical is equal to epsilon 0 integral E divergence of E plus 1 over mu 0 integral curl of B 
cross B and that the term that we just worked out is going to be 1 minus epsilon 0 d by dt of E cross B is all integrated over the volume plus epsilon 0 integral is it plus or minus let me just check. So, this is going to be minus sign E cross curl of E d V. Let me take the term here to the left hand side and write this equation as d by d t of p mechanical plus epsilon 0 integral E cross B d V is equal to let me write the right hand side with red is equal to epsilon 0 integral E del dot E minus E cross curl of E integrated over the volume plus 1 over mu 0 integral curl of B cross product with B dV. I will now give a problem to you and that is show that epsilon 0 E divergence of E minus E cross curl of E integrated over the volume is equal to epsilon 0 integral d by d x b e alpha e beta minus one half e square delta alpha beta d v. This is the alpha th component of this. You may wonder that earlier in the electrostatic case we had shown that only the first term gives the term on the right hand side. Yes, that is true because in the electrostatic case curl of E was 0 and now that curl of E is not 0, we are subtracting it and getting this, this answer. So, that is one term. The other term I want you to recall, I have already said so, but still I want you to recall 1 over mu 0 curl of B cross B d V alpha th component is equal to 1 over mu 0 integral E by d x beta summation convention is being used B alpha B beta minus 1 half B square delta alpha beta d V. Once you do this, you immediately recognize that these are nothing but the stress tensor component and therefore, I can you know write this as a surface integral and then write this equation that I wrote on the left side of the slide as d by d t of p mechanical plus epsilon 0 integral E cross B d V as equal to integral. Now, I will do a surface integral s beta t alpha beta this is alpha component of this where t alpha beta is the maxwell stress tensor and this term ds beta t alpha beta over the surface of this volume gives a force on the volume. 
rest is the interpretation. So, what we have now is that we have this volume inside which there are these charges rho r and there are these currents j r and it gives me that the rate of change of p mechanical of all the charges plus epsilon 0 e cross b d v is equal to force on the volume. But now, the force is always related to change in the momentum. So, this implies that epsilon 0 e cross b d v must be the momentum of electromagnetic fields inside the volume. So, that we have d by d t of p total which is d by d t of p mechanical plus p fields is equal to net force on the volume and the E m momentum density is equal to epsilon 0 E cross B, which can be written by multiplying by mu naught on top and on the bottom 1 over C square, the pointing vector S. So, wherever there are these electromagnetic fields, they are going to have a momentum and that momentum density is given by this. The best way to understand this now is to solve a problem where momentum of electromagnetic fields is going to be transferred to a charge or a particle and that will gain a mechanical momentum at the cost of electromagnetic momentum. So, that will illustrate this entire concept very well. So, let us solve a problem now. This is problem 6. Chapter 8 of Griffiths. And it says a charged parallel plate capacitor with uniform electric field E equals E z is placed in a uniform magnetic field B equals B x. So, let us make a figure for this. Here is the capacitor. Let us say this is plus q minus q. The area of the capacitor plate is A. The distance between the plates is D and it has an electric field between the plates as E z. So, this is E equals E z right the coordinate axes are like this x y and z in addition it has a magnetic field in the x direction uniform so b equals b x so this is what is given so, first question we ask is A find the electromagnetic momentum 
contained between the plates. They are going to ignore fringe effects for the electric field. And that is quite easy to do because I know that momentum density is 1 over c square s or epsilon 0 e cross b e b z cross x which is epsilon 0 e b y and the total momentum therefore, is going to be this times the volume which is going to be epsilon 0 e b area a distance d in the y direction. That is the total electromagnetic momentum contained between the plates and now this can be written as epsilon 0 e a is nothing but the sigma times a therefore, this is q the total charge b d in the y direction. This is the total momentum contained. Part b of the problem says a wire of resistance r is connected between the plates. Find the total impulse on the wire by the time that the capacitor is discharged. Again, ignore fringe effects. So, this is discharge is going to be through the wire. So, what we have now is here are the plates and here is this wire connecting the two. Let me make the x, y and the z axis. So, you have this E which is going up. So, this is plus q minus q. So, there will be a current in the wire, there will be a current I. There is a B which is in the x direction. So, B is coming out and therefore, as the current passes through the wire, there is going to be a force on it and we want to calculate the impulse of that force. So, the force on the wire is going to be I which is d q d t L which is d B in the y direction. So, the impulse is going to be integration of f d t which is going to be d q d t d b y d t integrated over which comes out to be then q d b in the y direction. So, by the time the total charge is gone from one plate to the other. So, that now there is no charge left on the plates this is the impulse and this is precisely equal to the momentum initially stored in the EM fields. So, all the momentum of the EM fields has been transferred to the wire. So, this this matches question you may have what happened to the stress tensor generated force. Leave this for you to think about. So, let me now conclude this lecture by saying that we have identified the term corresponding to the momentum of electromagnetic fields 
Uh, keep in mind that it has to be electromagnetic, both E and B exist, otherwise it will be 0 by considering change of momentum of a collection of charged particles and their currents. And two, we have confirmed the equations obtained by solving an example. In the next lecture, I will talk about electromagnetic angular momentum. Thank you.